Welcome back to our Oracle Cloud Mastery series. Today we're going to continue with our specialized uh, topic, network uh, in OCI. So I'll look into network load balancer. Okay, so this session will explore how OCI NLB can optimize your application performance and, and can ensure high availability. So to get to the network load balancer, we click on the hamburger menu, we click on the networking and we go to the load balancers menu. In here, as you can remember from the last part, yeah, you have this the load balancer comparison to know when you use an LB or a network load balancer. So in here, you can click create a network load balancer. It also has the menu in there and you start giving the names. As you remember from the last part, yeah, when you create the network load balancer, yeah, you have a public and a private IP. So it depends on what you need. If you want to do this type of uh, load balancer internally yeah, for availability for your internal network, you select the private one. If you want to expose your application to the internet, yeah, you select the public one. Next option that you have in here is again using a public IP address or use a, yeah, an ephemeral one. Yeah, that is will be automatically created at this point by Oracle. And if you delete the resource, it will be lost. Or if you want to use a reserved one that you can create at the time of creation and you can reuse it later. Yeah, so you can use the Oracle IP pool in there. Now, the simple part again, as it was in the initial part with a normal load balancer, you can need to also select the network where you want to put it in here. Also, you have the capability to select a network load balancer in here. So yeah, if we're going to select uh, an RDP, yeah, we can. We already have a network security group created in here, so you can select one. Or if you're going to send uh, yet yeah, to another uh, networking, we don't have one, so we need to create uh, a network security group. As I said last time, yeah, if you're gonna, let's say, expose something on the internet, yeah, and you know that the application it is on uh, a public subnet, yeah, or uh, like you're gonna create it for the load balancer, do not add those ports in the security list, use a network security group, okay? Why I'm saying that, let's say, if you're gonna expose over the internet port 80, it should be only for one machine that you know exactly that it needs to be exposed to the internet. It's a web server, even it's not recommended to use uh, unencrypted traffic. Okay, let's go over this one. But when you're going to put port 80 in the security li list, means that even if you create another machines, yeah, they are uh, in a public subnet, maybe you don't know it or you don't want to expose it at that point over the internet on port 80. When you put it in the security list, Port 80 is accessible for all the instances, for all the IPs that are in that public subnet. While if you go with a network security uh, group, yeah, like the one in here, you will only allow access on port 80 only for the machines that have this network security group attached to it. Okay, so it's much simpler, much safer. Now, if you remember, yeah, last time, for the load balancer, we had that option. Yeah, we have HTTP, we have uh, HTTPS, uh, yeah, HTTP 1.2, and so different uh, protocols in here for the listener. In this case, we can go with UDP. We can use any port for the connection. Yeah, so this one is much versatile on this one. Yeah, because uh, yeah, this is a low latency service with high throughput, and this will sc scale automatically for millions of requests. So that's why we can have requests on any port that you put it in here or we can make it more, uh, let's say, secure and allow only the ports that we need to use it for those applications. Same thing applies for TCP, or if we need both traffic TCP and UDP, yeah, we can select it in here. Next will be like, again, like in a normal load balancer, or well, layer seven load balancer, we select the backends. If we had in here some servers, yeah, we'll be able to select them. And we're gonna select the weight where you, would you want to connect. We have the uh, service health, yeah, so, so health check policy. Health checks are crucial, yeah, for maintaining the performance of your network load balancer. This one monitor the health of the backend sets and will reroute the traffic in case of any failures, yeah, ensuring you uninterrupted service in here. So let me put something in here. And yeah, that's it. At the end, you have this part with the review. Uh, as you can see here for the network load balancer, yeah, we cannot enable the logging uh, yeah, or what's happening in there. Last step, yeah, as you can see here, we're going to create a network load balancer. And if you want to see the network load balancer in the menu, you need to click on that one. If you want to go to load balancer, yeah, you can move to the other one. Okay. So um, network load balancing, yeah, in most use cases, yeah, this one is ideal for application requiring high performance and fault tolerance, yeah, like e-commerce platforms, large web scale application, uh, yeah, where you, maybe you can put in front of it another solution, yeah, to protect it, yeah, you can go 
and you, you want to use your own web application file or you don't want to use the Oracle ones, yeah? So um, th this is a very resilient solution. It is free of charge, yeah? So uh, uh, yeah, you need to find your best use case for it, okay? Because I love both solutions. I'm using both of them depending on my use cases. And uh, yeah, I, I never seen them uh, having issues on uh, the performance or things like that. So depends on how much you want to stress them. Okay, so thank you for watching this and uh, I'm waiting you on the next uh, part of the series. Thank you and I hope you enjoy it.